they had a f***ing dragon pop out, but all Japan had to do was run in with them f***ing rocket launchers, and the dragon was cooked. I don't know why, but recently I've been going back and watching some of my older anime, you know? Even though this anime ain't that old, it's 2013, but I've been going back and watching that era of anime recently just a lot. I feel like that was like the golden era of anime for like Slice of Life slash Isekai slash Romance. 2012 to 2016 is just a golden era for that sh anime still good now i'm not saying oh yeah old stuff better but like most of my favorite came from that period anyways this will probably be a short video because this is a slice of life isekai so ain't much to talk about but this is a little different from your usual isekai instead of bro being killed or just being randomly transported he just takes an online quiz then the government come to him and hires him and now he's in another world basically since bro's like the most knowledgeable dude about anime they just brought him to this fantasy world and his whole goal is to just make anime popular in this world. That's literally the main basis of the story, bringing capitalism to a fantasy world. But you know, since this nigga is a complete loser, as soon as he got here and saw a maid girl, he was tweaking out, quite literally scaring the hose away. But yeah, like I mentioned, bro is hired by the government to bring Japanese culture into this fantasy world. Like there's literally just a portal between this world and Japan. You know, since he's basically a diplomat, he has to go and meet the king of this kingdom. But the king just happened to be a young girl and you already know how that goes. I will admit this generation of anime did have a problem with that area. Anyway, Anyways, since bro is like bringing Japanese culture to this world, obviously he's going to have a whole lot of anime and manga imported or whatever. Screw the pre-details, it doesn't matter too much. And one day he was just reading a manga to his maid and the empress. And then the empress got jealous or mad because he was showing more attention to his maid. So she just started tweaking out, calling the maid all type of slurs because, you know, she got half elf. And for some reason, people hate half elves. But obviously MC ain't going to stand for that. This nigga could have actually just fucked his whole shit up because, you know, he on some diplomat shit and he just put his hands on a fucking empress. He could have, you know, started a war or whatever, but he slid for his bitch, I guess. Side note, I enjoy the amount of references that are in this show. Like, if you pay attention, you can even see Aegeus right there from fucking Persona 3. There's a whole lot of references to other shows in this anime and games in general. Anyway, to keep up his efforts on progressing the culture invasion, bro opened up a school that teaches strictly like japanese shit obviously that's gonna be a problem though you know we get a cool terrorist attack or two here but it's nothing crazy his maid almost died at one point too but she was back up next episode so ain't nothing really but i'm not kidding when i'm saying bro's actually just taking over the culture at one point he even had dudes playing soccer and shit but that's to show you this isn't really even a serious isekai for real we even got an episode when brody brought his maid girl back to the real world and shit well let me not say real world but back to his world they dad had a maid in the maid cafe. Everything was going pretty normal until episode 8. Because of the influence of manga, the empress of the kingdom chose to just lock herself away in her bedroom and quit her job just so she could stay, play video games, and read manga all day. The main theme of the show is just to show like how much culture and shit can actually impact everything because he basically brought culture to a world with almost no culture and it's kind of destroying everything they had. Eventually, the empress left her room deciding that just being locked up and ignoring her duties isn't actually good. That's a problem solved, but MC is still kind of, you know, doing stuff to the culture. And we get to see the full effects of all that once we get to episode 11. But first, minor thing I wanted to bring up. They had a fucking dragon pop out, but all Japan had to do was run in with them fucking rocket launchers and the dragon was cooked. That ass, if you bring a gun into a fantasy world, you're automatically stronger than 90% of the people there. 99%, honestly. Because if you can beat a fucking dragon with just fucking rocket launchers while all these knights are out here struggling and shit, Japan could easily just take over this whole place. Now, on to episode 11, like I been said. Basically, MC been going around, and he started noticing the impacts of the shit he's bringing. Mostly negative. Well, not mostly negative, but there are negative impacts. Obviously, there's the positive of people being more active and out there and more happy. But he kind of created a supply and demand, and they can only get their supplies from Japan. So Japan is regulating everything they bring in, which means they can make their own prices, and they're just profiting it one way. So MC goes up to 
to his boss or whatever, the dude who brought him here talking about some, hey bro, what's up with this? Because MC was just doing this, but he didn't really notice what he was doing. And then the boss was like, hey bro, I'm gonna be real with you. Do your job or we're just gonna kill your ass. You are replaceable. He said, basically, that was sent here just so we could take over Japan. This ain't no mutual bonding, my nigga. We're here to take over this fantasy world. I know I just slipped up and said Japan, but you know what I'm trying to say. After that, we get this small arc of MC just becoming a shut in again, but he breaks out of that pretty quick. But I just wanted to say the plot twist, let me not say a plot twist, but the mood change was kind of crazy. I haven't really been going over, you know, all the slice of life elements. So you probably won't experience it unless you actually watch the show for yourself. But the mood change from episode 10 to 11 is crazy because everything suddenly gets a deeper meaning. Obviously, since this is MC, he's not going to just sit by and let Japan fuck this kingdom over. So basically, he went to the Empress talking about some, hey, instead of relying on Japan, how about we make our own manga and anime here so they don't have to source everything to Japan? and basically be at their whims. Obviously, his boss ain't gonna take too kindly to that. So they set his school on fire. I won't spoil it because it's one of my favorite moments in the show. But MC ran in there. He passed out, yada, yada. And then th his maid girl came to save him. I'm not gonna tell you any details on it, but it was probably one of my favorite moments in this whole show. Anyways, after the whole attack on his shit or whatever, MC decided to just get on cam and talk to the government himself. Obviously, it went how you thought it would go. The government was like, hey, bro, let me remind you, we can just get you gone any moment. But it turns out he hid this magical creature or whatever, and he had it on him the whole time. So everything the government said, the people of the kingdom could hear. So then the empress herself came down talking about some, hey, you want to fuck with this nigga? We going to fuck y'all shit up. Even though if Japan honestly wanted to attack this nation, this nation would be cooked. But you know, they don't want to just box for no reason. And then after that the anime pretty much ended but i'm just like why does the government always have to be the bad guys i mean realistically ah uh, let me not say that i'm gonna have fbi knocking at my door i'm just saying bro why they always gotta be the bad guys in every show it's always the government that be starting shit that's all i'm gonna say